Hey, beautiful, good afternoon to you, um, wherever you're watching us from. Um, this is yours truly, uh, Mr. Panuka from Panuka Farm. And I uh, hope you're having a good time, wherever you're watching us from. Um, yeah, um, I just happen to be in our open, you know, fields here. Uh, this is sweet corn that we've got, you know, uh, behind me. Um, and um, the other side, we've got some cabbage. Uh, and then a lot more, you know, sweet corn on the other side. Um, so I just wanted you to get an appreciation of what's going on in our open fields, uh, how we are surviving with, you know, the cold because it's been rather cold last uh, couple of, uh, you know, months here at, um, you know, Panuka Farm uh, in Zambia. Uh, but yeah, we're soldiering on um, despite the cold. And uh, yeah, let me just take you around uh, so that you get an appreciation of exactly. Um, how we're managing, you know, to survive with the cold. Um, I think a couple of weeks ago we did, um, you know, a video uh, where uh, we just showed you our survival, you know, strategy. But I think it's good for you to get a, um, you know, a closer, you know, view of how, you know, the different crops are actually surviving. And uh, hopefully that gives you a glimpse of um, what's possible, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, you know, the cold season, what can survive, what cannot. Uh, I think it's very important when you farm to kind of have those, you know, nuances uh, to really see what can work and what cannot. So uh, let's take, you know, a deep dive and uh, hope, you know, enjoy uh, this video and the information that um, uh, we're sharing today. So the first crop that we're covering uh, today is, um, you know, sweet corn. Um, I think a couple of weeks ago we did, you know, um, you know present about this crop and um i think the onslaught of um you know uh armyworms um i think these are the scars of the armyworms but um it appears to have recovered and um pretty much looks like a decent you know uh, crop now uh loving the greenery but also i think we owe this to the uh the warming up of the weather uh it's been uh, a bit warmer uh, of late a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had quite some very serious, you know, uh, drop in temperatures. But you can see now, uh, pretty good, you know, uh, crop coming up. So again, just showing the prowess of the sun and what it can do uh, in crop, uh, you know, farming. So the larger, you know, crops um, of, um, you know, sweet corn. Uh, this is another field. This one is actually almost ready. Uh, you can actually see uh, it's already, you know, tasseled. Uh, so this one is much bigger compared uh, to this other one on the other side. So unlike, you know, the real, you know, uh, corn as it were, uh, you actually see that with sweet corn, it doesn't get that too tall. Uh, you actually see that it gets ready, uh, still looking slightly quaffy, so of course it's a variety issue. Uh, but generally sweet corn, like we've seen it, doesn't get really that uh, tall. So in a couple of weeks, that one that you see there will actually be ready, um, still looking slightly dwarfish. So away from sweet corn, um, we have some red cabbage here. Um, this was a trial that we're doing. Um, again, one of the lessons in uh, you know, uh, you know, crop farming and indeed any other crop is that um, uh, before you go crazy uh, with scaling up with any new um, you know line. You've got to make sure that uh, you do uh, a trial. So we did two lines uh, of a trial and uh, likely these have actually gone very well. So you always need a proof you know, of concept before you can think about scaling up. So that's just a bit uh, on uh, the red cabbage, but uh, obviously this being a brassica has done quite very well, decent you know, heads uh, of uh, red cabbage. So next stop uh, is the green you know, cabbage. Uh, we have quite a large, you know, field here, uh, spanning all the way in that direction. Uh, we'll get there. So one of the critical, you know, issues with cabbage uh, is this, you know, pest called diamond black moth. Um, I think it almost gave us a bit of an issue, uh, but like you see in all the, you know, field, we've actually uh, kept this under control. You can actually see just next here, uh, we don't have black, you know, diamond black moth. Um, so yeah. A good job by our team and uh, like you can see I think um, throughout you know the field uh, diamond you know black moth is like less than you know a percentage in terms of uh, impact on this crop uh, so it's quite a very immaculate you know looking uh, crop 
so this is spotless you can see no diamond black moth and then the nutrition looks very good um, so this is what you want to see uh, in a cabbage you know crop um, you know uh, without these you know uh, pests so this is quite a large field uh, of uh, the green you know cabbage so in anticipation for um, reduced you know production uh, owing to um, the impact that the cold does uh, on sweet corn uh, we had to you know bring on board um, you know cabbage just as a gap filler uh, for a couple of months uh, and obviously as soon as the temperatures you know get warmer uh, then we revert back you know to sweet corn and shove off you know cabbage um, so it's very important again in terms of just uh, farming as a business um, you know you've got some fixed costs on the farm like labor but then you have to make sure that uh, since you've got this fixed cost in terms of labor um, the team obviously has to be busy and find an alternative that um, is going to fill that uh, void um, that your core crop uh, is going to leave uh, in your uh, financial structure we have seen farms sometimes where uh, when your core crop uh, is kind of out of season uh, from the impact of weather um, then there's a bit of idleness on the uh, staff uh, but from a farming as a business concept that's not very good you have to make sure that uh, you know the staff is actually fully employed uh, and there's production all year round um, so you need those you know gap fillers so previously we have um, uh, farmed cabbage on um, what is called the rain house uh, we'll leave a link I think on the uh, this video for you to see how rain house you know works uh, but you can see here we are actually using uh, drip uh, this is um, you know uh, a 30 centimeter um, uh, it's like about 10 uh, centimeter you know spacing between the ammeters so these drippers do a good job uh, in terms of irrigation uh, you can actually see that um, the bed is wet uh, throughout um, because of the fact that the ammeters are quite close uh, to each other. So that's um, on the cabbage end. So um, I think before we get to the other crop, I think it's very important, I think, uh, to emphasize uh, on the business side uh, of, you know, crop production because I think uh, most farmers uh, get really attached to the production side, which is very good. Um, but I think you always have to see uh, the impact of, uh, you know, some of the things that you do on the farm, um, you know, uh, on your bank account. I think it's very important uh, so that you make sure that the decisions that you make in terms of production, you know, planning what you grow and stuff like that really translate into uh, some good money uh, in your uh, bank and then avoid some of those, you know, uh, wavy um you know uh, impacts uh, on your financial you know uh, situation so the impact of climate change is actually quite real um and so but then you need to know when your crops really get affected uh, by the weather whether be it the cold and and, and some, something like that and then find some gap fillers at the time when uh, some of your core crops are actually uh, hit so that um, you are in production uh, all year round and that's that's very important so um the third, or is it the fourth, you know. So the next crop uh, that uh, we're reviewing today is, uh, you know, iceberg lettuce. Uh, again, this is one of our core, you know, crops. And um, again, just a testimony that uh, this is another crop that can actually do very well uh, in open field. Um, no rocket science here. So you can see how crisp, you know, these heads look um, and how lovely um, it is. Of course, our soils are quite good. And how do you know that our soils are quite good? You also see just the evenness, um, you know, of the uh, the crops. You hardly see, um, you know, the gaps uh, in our production, meaning the survival rate of our seedlings in the soil is very good, very high. I think uh, over 95%. So that's what you want to see uh, from a good soil. Uh, because in most of the poor soils, what you see is that um, there would be gaps in here and then there's also an evenness in the sizes of the heads uh, of the uh, iceberg lettuce. Uh, but here you can actually see very even. And by the way, we plant these heads, um, you know, on two rows. Uh, I'll be able to demonstrate shortly, I think, uh, in the younger crop so that you see how we do this in zigzag format. Um, but the beauty of that is that uh, there's less evaporation 
uh, in the beds, uh, given that there's quite some very good, you know, uh, you know, um, leafy, you know, coverage. Um, so very minimal uh, incidences of um, uh, high e evaporation uh, where the drip is exposed. I think we have one um, kind of isolated incidence here um, where probably something happened. Uh, I think the team actually must have harvested already uh, some heads here. But um, when you've got, you know, uh, the land exposed like this, um, this obviously precipitates to very high, um, you know, uh, evaporation incidences uh, of, you know, uh, some serious, you know, sunlight. But overall, you can actually see that uh, the way we uh, plant, uh, you know, gives some very good, you know, uh, cover to the soil uh, in terms of the impact uh, of uh, on evaporation. So uh, this is what I promise. Um, you can actually see that the planting is actually done on a zigzag format. Um, one on the left, right, um, and in that manner at about 30, you know, uh, centimeters uh, between, um, you know, the, the, the seedlings. And uh, pretty much comes out uh, very good uh, like this. So that's your result when they fully, um, you know, grow, um, even at, um, you know, that kind of spacing. So this spacing is very good. Um, it's a proven one. We've just shown you that uh, your iceberg lettuce will still come out very uh, well uh, with minimal um, you know, fatalities as it were um, pretty much um, we have very good you know, survival ratio for our seedlings once they're in the soils um, we do take care of our soils um, obviously use of uh, well decomposed manure uh, is part of uh, what we do here uh, in our open fields and obviously even the greenhouses so obviously you see quite a lot of uh, you know greenhouse farming, um, but you can actually see from this video that we have quite um, a lot you know of open field um, you know production, um, but then you know doing you know pretty well. Um, so yeah, we're not just masters at uh, you know greenhouse farming. Uh, we're able to spin this uh, even in open field. Um, so the art to farm is not restricted to you farming in the greenhouses um actually our you know theory is that you've got to learn how to farm uh in open field before you can actually look at greenhouse farming because then you do a much better uh, job um yeah so um thanks to technology um this is uh the solar system that we actually use uh with you know a commercial borehole uh, for our you know uh, production so all this that you actually see in open fields that we've just shown you uh, is probably powered by one you know uh, solar uh, system uh, this is almost you know two hectares uh, of different you know crops uh, all uh, you know powered uh, by this um, you know solar system so again uh, just extending uh, the prowess uh, of solar so there you have it. Um, you have no excuse if you are off-grid. Um, I think some of these you know, technologies are available and they can actually do wonders. Uh, these are some of the possibilities um, you know, uh, of what um, you know, uh, solar prowess can actually do, um, even in open field um, you know, farming. Again, very good testimony uh, of very good you know, production quite very angelic um, and um, yeah we can actually say we can compete with anybody out there um, and by the way um, one thing I wanted to actually indicate that with iceberg lettuce um, many people have actually tried hydroponics aeroponics and what but this is one kind of lettuce that has actually been a problem for even those technologies uh, most of the hydroponics aeroponics um, you know aquaponics systems uh, are able to do um, the leafy uh, lettuces, but with iceberg lettuce, uh, if you crack it, uh, it comes at quite a huge uh, cost. So yeah, we can actually see that the soil still uh, rules, still the king <laughs> when it comes to crop production. So the other crops that actually do well um, in open field uh, during the cold season is broccoli and cauliflower. And that's what we have here. Uh, in open field um, these two um, you know brassicas just like you know cabbage 
they do pretty well uh, in open field especially during um, this cold season so looking quite healthy um, that's your broccoli and uh, you know uh, cauliflower uh, so broccoli will always have uh, some you know bigger uh, leaves so you can see they look a bit more vibrant uh, so this this trait is all um, you know uh, broccoli uh, in open fields um, and looking slightly whitish so that's how you differentiate them just in case you can't see the actual uh, broccoli um, and uh, let's just hop this other side so that you can actually see the difference side by side so you see that cauliflower looks a bit slightly toughish deeper you know green so that's that's the difference if you're actually planting this side by side um, from this end you can actually see one on the left looks a bit uh, yeah uh, taller a bit more vibrant compared uh, to our cauliflower on the right so all right folks um, this was just a video meant to uh, show you how we are surviving here uh, in most of our uh, open fields um climate change is real uh but i think it's very important for you to really devise some you know survival you know tactics <laughs> yeah uh, even if um you know the weather pattern kind of takes you know um a dip um but yeah we're surviving um i think some of our greenhouse you know crops especially sweet pepper has actually been affected we'll do a separate video uh, to show you exactly what the impact has been but yeah this is where we are so wish you well with your um you know production and um yeah we request you to just smash that subscribe button so that um as we drop any more uh, juicy you know tidbits you get um updated so from yours truly uh mr panuka from right here at panuka farm uh, in zambia uh it's a lovely you know afternoon more so that uh it's blazing, you know, hot, uh, quite rare uh, in July, early July. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much and bye-bye.